back on the bike tour of Denmark this week. I began by asking me, you lost a little bit of skin, did you, pal, overnight? Yeah, stage one today of um, tour of Denmark, and it was a bit of very, it was a very tense peloton, and we yeah, had um, a bit of everything weather-wise, massive downpour at one stage, and gravel washed all over the road and then yeah i just um thought i was thought i'd well my life had flashed before my eyes about five times beforehand and i thought i was in the clear made the the front selection towards the end of the race and then got pushed into a curb and high sided over it um so that was the end of my race unfortunately but well still still finished and just yeah bit bit less skin on the ass cheek ready for tomorrow's stage oh so you're back into it tomorrow yeah yeah stage two of five tomorrow and when you say a, a little less skin, so um, just to, to describe to those of us who are wincing at the moment, you you sell that, you wash it, you bandage it, and what you gently sit back on the seat. How does this work? Um, well, straight in the straight in the team bus afterwards for a shower and some betadine and um, some gauze and scrub away to get all the uh, all the dirt and grit and stuff out of it, and then um, yeah, some some. Uh, what am I trying to say? Wax gauze and um, cover that up. Keep it, keep it moist. And luckily, it's just sort of on the outside. We're not going to go into too much detail sure. here, but the outer edge of my glute, rather than actually where I'm sitting on the saddle, so I can still turn the pedals. <laughs> this this happens, and it's just it's just part of the job, isn't it? Very unfortunate part of the job. Um, I never never enjoy it, and yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I think as I've got a bit older too, I've got a bit more sensible and like to leave a bit more room but yeah it's um the nature of the sport what you gotta you gotta not give your your position away that's kind of the track is kind of a bit easier because you've only got 24 guys out there but today we've got 160 odd all trying to be at the front on a, a small narrow twisting bit of danish road so um yeah <laughs> unfortunately these things happen luckily i wasn't as bad off as some of the other guys i poor guys i saw come down today um there's some nasty ones Multiple world champion Aaron Gates is with us. How does that sound, mate? Multiple world champion. <laughs> that's cool, eh? Yeah, nice to be able to chalk that up. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Last week, you know, the world champs, um, the best performance ever by a New Zealand team, and this is on the back, of course, of your triple gold at the Commonwealth Games. You're ticking boxes, mate. I mean, at some stage, you're going to be able to sit back and, and I suppose, really absorb this and, and, and look at it and go, wow, and pat yourself on the back. But, I mean, you know... Life goes on, the job goes on. But just, just track us back to that. You said that winning that points race was enormous for you. Why? Um, it's just a it's a race I've always been super passionate about. And um, to me, it's just quintessential track cycling. You go out there and you've you've got everything. Like it's a, it's a tactical race, but it's also you've got to have an engine to do it and you've got to have speed too. So it kind of, to me, it's like the amalgamation of what track cycling cycling is and um my first experience was was back at the world champs and well actually delhi in 2010 where i think i was fourth or fifth um narrowly missing the podium and sort of got to race guys that i aspired to racing like and it was kind of the first time i'd actually been able to go out there at a world champs level um com games aside and then um race like how i wanted to race and um yeah, sort of be the one dictating the terms rather than be dictating two. <laughs> An impressive win, though. I mean, like, uh, and 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 in the end, was it? You know, was it? Oh, it was by minutes, wasn't it? It was comfy in the end. Yeah, I had a few points up my sleeve, so I was able just to ride um, within myself in the last fifteen or so laps and just make sure I stayed out of trouble because been caught out before with a, a late a late crash in those races when you think you're safe and then the guys around you um, <laughs> will be on their limit and yeah that's when mistakes start to happen right at the end so um yeah, it was nice just a such a nice feeling to hear the bell for the last lap and then come around knowing that it was it was mine um it was a pretty special feeling two golds four silvers five bronze so far at the world championships and you've competed in them in over a decade it's just out, outstanding mate what does it mean to you in the team pursuit in the madison you've got bronze at glasgow and those what does it mean to you doing the team's things with the other new zealand boys yeah, it's um, team events. Like, it's still, it's still my favourite. You go out there with the guys that you've been, um, you know, hacking away at training with, and sort of riding your guts out so you can go out there and, and try and do your best, best um, performance on race day. Um, and then, like, I was rooming with Campbell. We got back to the room after the TP, and he was just like, "Shit, bronze sucks. So let's not do that again." And then. <laughs> 
<laughs> we went out there and got it again the following night. But um, I, I was still, for us, that bronze of the Madison was kind of at least a good sign. We went into the into the last sprint. And we could have we could have actually won it had the teams that didn't get second and got third in that final sprint behind us winning the last sprint. We could have actually been ahead of them. So it was a it was a close race, and it just shows that um, we're well within the the hunt and the fight going into into Paris, which is pretty exciting. It's an event that. I was meant to ride in Tokyo before I crashed out, yes, so I was pretty yes. gutted to to miss that opportunity with with Campbell. Then, so this will kind of um, hopefully next year be a bit of redemption for for previous Olympics. Aaron Gate with us. It's not your swan song, is it, mate? <laughs> Say again, sorry. It's not your swan song. The Olympics next oh. year. Um, nah, 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 nah. Not ready for that yet. Okay, still having too much fun. So when we spoke to you last year, and me and Lachlan laugh about this in the office all the time, that, you know, you'd just gone to Birmingham, you'd won four golds, and then you're in Spain. And I remember ringing you and saying, oh, God, it must be lovely having a holiday, Costa del Sol and everything. And you worked, you were back on the bike <laughs> within days, and you were back at work. And this is the same thing, mate. So when you won last week, they were sitting here and I said, I bet the bugger, I bet he's back working, I bet he's back doing right. He said, no, 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 he must be taking a break. How do you do it? How do you physically do it? Well, actually, the worst thing was flying back from Glasgow. The airline lost our bikes for a couple of days, so I was oh, um, forced to forced to not ride for a couple of days before coming here for a five day stage race. And it's a bit of a, a bit of a shock to the body when you go from doing like a four k team pursuit and even a fifty k Madison to then doing um, back to back hundred and seventy to two hundred and ten k road stages. So it's you kind of you know that you're going to pay the price of you. Um, if you don't get the work done before before these sort of things, luckily the legs were actually quite good today before um, things went tits up, literally. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of what makes cycling so enjoyable for me that there's just so many facets, but I do have to admit it was pretty hard leaving the family again after only being at home for two days and telling my poor boy Axel that Dad was going away again for a bit and then back home for, for one day before the next one in yeah. France next week. So it's... Um, yeah, I mean, for me though, it's also like I know that the end of the season is not that far away. I've got another five weeks or so, and then actually get to put the feet up for a couple of weeks and start the the final rebuild phase before we, um, yeah, do all the the finishing touches physically before um, the the big dance in Paris next year. When you say put the feet up for a couple of weeks, do you actually ride at all during that time, or do you physically and mentally give yourself that time off? No, nah, no, nah, hang the bike up and, and don't touch it. Last year I actually took a full four weeks off, but I started riding again and that was a bit too much time because it was sort of like, oh, I don't actually think I can <laughs> start to feel like I could never be a bike rider again. Um, so I'll probably shorten that up a bit by a week or so this year. But it is so important you take that break. I know I've guys that have tried to just ride every second day or something in, in the break and then it comes time to start start really racing again mid-season and they're already burnt out. It's just so important both mentally and physically, you do give the body a chance to to um, take some respite. We spoke to you last time as well. I've got a couple more questions, if it's okay for you, mate. Um, we spoke to you last time as well. Just that transition from racing those, just, they look like little rocket ships on wheels on the track, and then to go onto the, you know, bike uh, that you race on the road. Um, is, there, is there that much of a difference to you? I know the bikes are completely different, but is there that much of a difference to you? Um, I guess they're both kind of built into my muscle memory, but it does take a bit to to get used to one or the other. Like today, for example, going through the the first few corners in a um, pretty big field of bike riders, and you know we don't have brakes or anything on the track, and then you're going around, and we also only turn left if you've got yeah, to actually right. turn both directions <laughs> on the road. Good point. Um, <laughs> and yeah, corners and brakes and everything else to deal with. So it's definitely a bit bit rusty to start with but it comes back relatively quickly and um, you sort of, yeah, comes back to just being uh, being able to get stuck in and and racing as, as you were, so to speak. When you say, I'm going to track right back to the beginning, when you say that, you know, your life flashes before your eyes, so you're just riding hell out there. I'm, I'm assuming that this is 60 to 70 Ks or something like that and so you don't have really much time to react but also you're in that big group of people. Is it kind of like the red arrows flying to him? You're just hoping that the guy in front of you is going to do it right, aren't you? Because that's what you're watching. Are you watching his wheel or you're watching the road? What are you seeing? Um, you sort of get a bit of everything. Like, say the riders are spread across the whole road and you're in the third or fourth fourth line at the time, sheltering from the wind behind everyone else. Um, what was catching us out today was these sneaky little curbs that um, just seemed to come out of nowhere. And... Um, 
yeah, somebody will clip one of those with their wheel and they don't know it's coming, they're Ugh. falling down and you're just hoping that you can swerve or what well, not swerve because you can't take too drastic action because there's somebody still right next to you and you're all trucking along at 50, 50 to 60 k's an hour. And uh, um, yeah, also just hoping that their bike that's on the ground in front of you doesn't start sliding <laughs> in your direction. So that was the, the flashing before the eyes part today, just um, yeah, dodging bikes and, and people on the ground sometimes. It's just often in these races, the first stage is always a bit bit nervous. So hopefully things calm down a bit tomorrow now that um, some of the, the general classification in the race has been decided and um, things can hopefully go a bit more smoothly. I think the weather was definitely a factor today too. Just everyone seeing the big rain cloud on the horizon starting to freak out a bit. One more dumb question <laughs> for you, mate. So, and this is what I mean. I was, I, I was just, I'm infatuated with the Tour de France, and I, and I and I watch every single leg of it. I don't watch it in the middle of the night. I, you know, I, I always record it and I watch it. And I just, when 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 you say you're getting a windbreak behind, you know, I'm always fascinated. How much of you know, if you've got one guy in front of you and you're following him, how much wind does he actually take out of you? I mean, is it is it that significant? Is it? Um, it's definitely like one guy versus 20 is a big difference as well. Like on the, for some context in the team pursuit, the best position to be is actually in the third wheel because you've got someone behind you and two in front of you. But second wheel, it does creep up another 20% or so. But yeah, like in a, in a team pursuit, for example, you're genuinely doing about, generally doing about 50% less effort. Um, wow. Wow. Behind the other person, so it's um and and yeah, and um, and um, and what about a road race? Like, what about when you're doing that? Um, even more potentially, especially if you're just riding along on a nice flat piece of smooth road, and you're sitting in the middle of the bunch, you're doing probably yeah um, less than fifty percent of the guy that's that's on the that's driving the pace on the front for his team, whether it's trying to catch the group in front or he's just trying to keep his team out of trouble. It's definitely a game of um where you use your energy and how you use it and the best way to to use it so you can try and cross the finish line first which is kind of when you're in in bike racing what makes it so so exciting because there's so many facets to it and it's never um you can never do exactly the same thing and get the same result there's um so many different factors at play Mate, you're a horse. You're an Iron Man. You're a giant, hey, and we love it. We absolutely adore it, mate. I mean, watching you win these world championships and that, and just you know, your, your continued success. We're so very proud of you, mate. Just keep—I don't know what to say. Just keep going as hard as you can possibly go. That's great, <laughs> no, Aaron. You got you got a couple Appreciate of fanboys here, mate. You really have. We love you, mate. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Appreciate it.